When it comes to writing a strong cover letter, there's no better way to show you what not to do than going over a cover letter that got me rejected from almost every company back in the day. In this video, we'll cover the five critical mistakes I made and what you should do instead to maximize your chances of landing that first round interview. So let's get started. Mistake number one, not addressing your cover letter to an actual human being. Dear Deloitte recruiter, Right off the bat, the reader will see this impersonal opening and know the candidate did not do any research. But you might say, Jeff, most of the time, we don't know who to address it to. And you'd be right. According to Austin Belsack, one of the best career coaches out there, ideally you want to address the cover letter to the direct manager of the role. And if that doesn't work, find the most senior person on that team. In my Deloitte example, the reporting line looks like senior consultant, manager, senior manager, director, partner, managing partner. So using the LinkedIn search bar, I type in manager, filter for people, current company, Deloitte Digital, location, Hong Kong, and here is a list of people I can address my cover letter to. Pro tip, I would take this advice a step further and click into these profiles to see if we have mutual connections who can introduce us or mutual interests I can bring up in a cold message to learn more about the role. Check out my LinkedIn videos to learn how. Whether or not you took that extra step, now, no matter who reads your cover letter, they'll know you did your research. And trust me, addressing it to the managing partner, as try hard as that sounds, is better than Deloitte recruiter. Number two, grammar mistakes and typos. Let's first start with the data. Studies have literally shown 80% of hiring managers and recruiters find spelling errors to be deal breakers. In fact, it's the number one reason resumes and cover letters are rejected. But maybe you're not trying to work for a stuck up corporation. A couple of typos shouldn't matter, right? It's about your skills. Here's what Ali Abdal has to say after reviewing 2000 plus resumes when hiring for his team. Okay, so bunch of spelling and grammar issues there. Like this is really obvious stuff. Ali, a full-time YouTuber, isn't someone we normally associate with being professional or businessy. But even he knows that basic errors represent a larger problem. The candidate is not detail-oriented and therefore a risky hire. Here's a ChatGPT prompt you can use to find and fix all the grammatical mistakes and typos in your cover letter, and it will even tell you every single thing that has been changed in a before and after column. I'll link this in the description. Pro tip, I always recommend asking five other people to read your cover letter as well. And to make sure they're paying attention, insert an obvious mistake towards the end. If your friend doesn't say anything, they're probably not a reliable friend. Mistake number three, not spending enough time on the hook. Here's a litmus test. If you replace your target company with a competitor and the beginning paragraph still makes sense, you do not have a good hook. 50% of your time should be spent on an engaging hook because there's no point writing the rest of a cover letter if they don't read past your first paragraph. The most common mistake people make, including myself, is being too self-centered. I am writing to introduce myself. I learned of this opportunity. I believe I am well suited. Just imagine if I started off this video with, before we get started, please like and subscribe. You'll be really helping my channel out. And when you're down there, please comment and follow me on Instagram. See what I did there? Unless you're my mom who thinks I'm God's gift to humanity, you couldn't care less. So compare this self-centered opening with this one. Everyone tells me the entry level position in any of the big four firms is gonna be the same. However, after attending five career fairs and speaking with over 20 professionals, it has become clear to me EY stands out from the rest. You're not probably feeling a little bit curious. Why is EY different? So you feel like you have to keep reading. And this hook works because the candidate highlights a relatable pain point for big four firms. There's a perception that all entry level positions are the same. To find a pain point for your situation, use this prompt in ChatGPT. Based on this job description, what is the biggest challenge someone in this position would face day to day? Give me the root cause of this issue and paste the job description. Now you have the complexity or pain point, you can ask ChatGPT to generate ideas for engaging hooks. I won't read the entire prompt, it'll be linked down below, but basically you're asking ChatGPT to relate your current role and industry to the role and company you're applying for. By the way, neither Deloitte nor UI is sponsoring this video, so KPMG, PwC, hit me up. But it is supported by those of you who subscribe to my paid productivity newsletter on Google Workspace Tips. Link in the description if you wanna learn more. Mistake number four, not including tangible results. Back to the body paragraph of my cover letter, I highlighted things like my one year of an engagement experience in operational strategy and my ability to build and maintain client relationships. The problem with all these vague statements is that I'm describing what I've done when I should be quantifying my impact. Put another way, what was the result of my actions? And can I attach a number 
to that result. To prove to you every job in the world can have quantifiable impact, I'll use this sentence that ends with, my ability to build and maintain client relationships, which can't possibly be measured, right? Paste that into ChatGPT with this prompt. I'm a job seeker. I don't know how my success is measured. I'll describe what I do and your task is to give me suggestions where and how I can add quantifiable and measurable metrics. For each of my vague descriptions, ChatGPT gives a specific example of how I can quantify my actions. Using this as an example, I could change my original sentence to something like, our project received a 96% client satisfaction score as measured in a quality assurance survey, compared to a company-wide benchmark of 85%. I received recognition for being a day-to-day -day contact at the client site. I could already see some of the comments. Will you be able to identify a perfectly accurate number each time? No. Should you lie? Definitely not. But trust me when I tell you, hiring managers care more about the effort you took to find the numbers than the actual numerical values. Mistake number five, being unaware of cover letter hygiene. I learned this first one a bit late, but never include your full street address in your cover letter because number one, they're not gonna send you mail. Number two, there's a risk of discrimination if they know where you live. Second thing to be aware of, avoid industry specific acronyms and jargon. I didn't really make this mistake here, but I've seen cover letters from marketers that say, as a PMM working on SaaS CRM solutions, I've owned the full funnel customer journey from KV ideation to execution. I mean, enough said. Third, don't go over two pages. Even if you have a lot of work experience, keeping your cover letter short and to the point shows a reader you're able to prioritize the most impactful and relevant experiences for the role you're applying for. Bonus mistake number six, creating your cover letter from scratch. To reward those of you who watched until now, I'll include a link down below to the good cover letter I went over today. The PDF version will be for free so you can reference it when creating your own. After that's done, make sure to check out my LinkedIn videos on how to network effectively because studies have shown most cover letters are read only after a personal connection has been made with the reader. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.